All right, coach. Here we are, San Francisco State University. Beautiful sunny day. I got to go straight to the weather. Is that a big recruiting tool for you? It is, yeah. It's definitely um, it's a huge recruiting tool. You know, so much going on at SF State. Um, and I think the fact that in November, it's, you know, in the 70s still is a really amazing thing. The waves are great. You know, it's sunny out. And we're still having after practices and runs is, is a really big plus for us. Yeah, you can get outside. You can do. And, and I hear that there's a, a surfing contingent going on around here. <laughs> were you a surfer before you got here? You know, I, I surfed some, but not, not like I do now. Yeah, so I think it's been a thing where, I mean, right now we're only probably a half mile from the from Ocean Beach. So, okay. And I live probably two blocks from there. Nice. So um, it's like my my passion, my workout. So when I'm not on the mat working out, I'm probably in the water working out. So you you are a California kid. You grew up in Walnut Creek, right? Not too, not too far from here, right? Yep, just about an hour east. So from the area, um, super happy to be back. And uh, yeah, I mean that's a big thing. Going back to the recruiting side, you know, we're trying to keep our California boys in California. Um, been recruiting a lot from the San Diego, Southern California area because it is a different, you know, kind of culture. It's still far from home, but still close. Mm -hmm. In state tuition, so. Um, yeah, having a lot of success for, with our California kids, and that's been our, our main focus. So, so expand a little bit more on the, the in-state tuition side, because that's such a huge deal. If, if I come from Ohio, where I'm from, or PA, or, or the area we think is, you know, wrestling country, right? Um, <laughs> In-state tuition versus out-of-state tuition. I mean, you really have that, that's that's is it an obstacle for for most kids? Yeah, it definitely is an obstacle. You know, obviously, you know, funding and, and scholarships and FAFSA. That's a huge part of how you get someone to your program and retaining them and you know enticing them to come to your school. So um, for us, you know, in-state tuition is only seven grand, which is pretty great. Oh and yeah. Out-of-state is about seventeen. Okay. Um, and also in-state, you qualify for more grants possibly if you do qualify for FAFSA. So with that being said, it's, it's a little more strategic for us to recruit in-state heavily, you know. We definitely are open to out-of-state kids, but, you know, just being knowledgeable that, hey, you're going to have to pay a little more if you are out-of-state versus our in-state guys are getting a little more funding and it's a little bit easier. So um, that's sort of been, you know, if you look at our roster, we probably have 85% California kids because that really is our, our niche, you know, and then we do have some, you know, Pennsylvania kids peppered in and et cetera. So three-timer here in the state of California, right? What what type of wrestler are you looking for in, in state here to come wrestle for your program? Yeah, the biggest thing that I'm looking for is um, Do you have to be a state champ. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, a three time state champ. <laughs> yeah. So the biggest things we're looking for is some of those like less tangible items. You know, obviously we're looking for guys who are, are placing at state. You know, doing well, um, placing those bigger tournaments. But I'm looking for kids who are still hungry, who have good grades, mental fortitude who hand fight, step forward, mat return, you know? Those are some of the things that like, if I see a guy who's doing mat returns on top and riding hard and stepping forward aggressively during matches and he's the guy who tends to, to win his close sort of seventh period or seventh minute matches, yep. that's the guy on my team, right? Okay. You know, So for me, um, I know I was kind of like, you know, a little bit scrambly and stuff, but I think behind that, that more funky style was a really a, a base of stepping forward, grittiness, mental fortitude, and that's what I'm looking for in our recruits, right? Guys who are um, really want to be here, who are passionate and work their butts off and, and like wrestling, you know, or love, I should say love wrestling. So you obviously have been on the raised stage on Saturday night at NCAA Division One. Mm -hmm. How do you think, what mentality do you bring into a Division Two program? What, what are the differences between the two and obviously what you saw over at Northwestern? Yeah, totally. Um, you know, going back to Northwestern, I had a great experience there. Like, love that program, love their staff and their current program, you know. They had a huge year this year. So yeah. it's, it's been, I've been such a proud alumni watching Storniolo and that crew just grow and have success. So. It's amazing. They're flying under the radar, but they're yeah. right there in front of our face. So they don't get enough credit. Do they? <laughs> totally. Yeah, I, I do think they're sort of like we're still like underrecognized. You know, yeah. like what do we take third this year, fourth? In big, at big, big or in, at NCAs. I don't know how it ended. Top five. Up. You know. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm free right now. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, you know, we had a great year, um, and uh, yeah, just. Uh, well, what's I, what's I, the difference between the, a, a D1 program and what you got here? Yeah, I think the the biggest thing, you know, getting our. Our younger guys who going back to my northwestern experience you know so many of those guys were you know double fargo champs and iron man champs and sort of have this long history of wrestling in their lives mm -hmm. and for me i'm looking for a lot of late bloomers right you know um so we're going back to keeping those foundations really intact you know and we're not necessarily working on i mean we were kind of banned stuff but it's not about as much 
top level polishing, as in getting those bigger picture items, going back to fortitude, doing the hard things, sort of like those sort of attitudes in place and that kind of wrestling, you know, because, um, yeah, I just think that we are getting, you know, obviously a different recruit here. So a young team, mm -hmm. right? Um, here we are in the off season, quote unquote off season. You have volunteer practice going on today. Mm -hmm. A huge turnout for that. Um, part of that mental fortitude and part of that attitude is happening on a day like today, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's a big testament to our guys right now that we're having voluntary open rooms this summer. Mm -hmm. And we have a big group wanting to be here, you know, and it truly is voluntary. I'm not yelling at kids who aren't here or, you know, like, I'm like, hey guys, we're here if you want to be here. And if not, it's, that's on you, but you need to tell me your plan. So, um, long story short, we're working this summer because we have a young group and we're really digging that foundation. I mean, that's been a thing, sort of our motto this spring and this summer is dig the foundation. I feel like we have a lot of guys with talent, a lot of late bloomers, a lot of underclassmen, and if we can give them the tools, we're going to be good next year. So um, I think this summer is going to be really important for us. Okay, you've said foundation a number of times. I get that. Let's talk about a couple other keys that's going to take for you in your mind as you project. I know wrestlers are in the moment. You don't look past the next match, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. But as a head coach, you have to look and project a little bit. What's it going to take to get another national championship here? Yeah, totally. I mean, um, talking about some of like sort of macro, more strategic things, you know, we got our roster cap up this year. We were holding about 26 to 28 guys. We're going to be at 32 next year, okay. you know, and going back to the whole like iron sharpen iron attitude, you know, and getting a lot of guys who are late bloomers, you know, we need to get more guys in this room. That way we have more chances of someone blossoming, right? Yep. So I'm um, really excited to have more training partners in this room, you know, and uh, and more, more crop to work with. So um, getting that roster cap up, and then I think we're gonna keep increasing our funding. You know, that's something I'm working with my AD on is increasing our scholarships. And uh, this room actually, we're sort of like just, uh, you know, still doing some facelift stuff, you know, getting the, the windows, you know, all set up, getting some pull-up bars. So I think we're just making sort of incremental steps to building a championship room at a macro sort of like strategic stage. And then, um, you know, I think culture-wise, people always talk about that, right? Yep. I think that culture, we really hammered the spring on doing the right things, mental fortitude, you know, making the hard choice. It's been another slogan for us, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, when we get in a situation where it's the third sort of step in a scramble or whatever, do we make the, the desperate choice and just dive for something or do we sprawl again, right? Do we step forward again, right? So making the hard choice, shape, um, and just thinking about a lot about some of those things. So I think for us, if we can instill those attitudes in our guys, we're gonna make runs, you know? Yeah, yeah, so um, we, we mentioned surfing. You got thing, other things to do outside hiking. What are some of the recreational stuff that the guys can do around here to blow off steam? Yeah, so I mean, that's the biggest thing is like SF State, we're sort of tucked into a quieter corner in the city, and then everything the city has to offer is right at your fingertips, right? So, you know, you want to go to certain restaurants, Golden Gate Park, surfing. I mean, Ocean Beach is, is six miles of just beach break right there, right? Um, we go north to Marin, lots of hiking. Okay. We go south to Pacifica, more surfing, more hiking. Um, I just feel like in the Bay Area, like the biggest thing is you can get kind of whatever you want, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to snowboard in Tahoe, that's three hours, maybe mm -hmm. not during season. Um, yeah. You know, there's just like any kind of food you want, any kind of sort of lifestyle, like I feel like it's here. So um, it's cool because I think we have a really diverse group of guys and I think they're able to um, find their communities here out in the room and outside the room, right? Um, it's a really diverse school. That's a big thing we have going for us. San Francisco has a ton to offer. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So talk to me about academic life here. What what what's classroom uh, size like? You you mentioned there's twenty. So there's about twenty four thousand kids. Twenty four thousand so kids. Okay. Pretty big school, right? Mm -hmm. But the, what's cool is the campus is really manageable, right? So at twenty four k, but it's on this huge campus where it's like kind of overwhelming, right? It's a really sort of smaller, tight knit campus, um, and then. Um, you know, academically, you know, we're seeing a lot of our guys right now are doing computer science, you know, and going back to like, hey, we're right next to Palo Alto, you know, San Francisco, obviously we're here. So looking at like, hey, we're an economic hub, right? So it's not just, obviously we're here to study and get great grades and get that degree, but internship opportunities, right? And networking opportunities. So even during the school year, we're not, you know, in a, a smaller town where you have to, you know, maybe go off somewhere for the summer to get those opportunities, or, you know, you can't just take a, a weekend trip somewhere, right? On a weekly basis, our guys can be networking downtown. They've been really growing themselves, you know, for their career future. And then the, that classroom size is it? What, 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 what's a student going to experience in the classroom? Right? You mentioned the 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 academic, mm -hmm. you know, side of it, but what's classroom setting? Yeah, like? I mean, honestly, what's cool is like 
obviously our lower division classes, right? Your general eds are gonna be bigger halls, right? That's, yep. that's, that's, that's kind of the case most places, mm -hmm. right? But our upper divisions are pretty small, you know? We saw um, a lot of our comp sci classes are maybe like 15, 20 kids. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of across the board, you know? We have so many different majors here that once you get into those niches, you're looking at a smaller group. Okay. All right, Coach, I, thanks for having me. This is awesome being here. I've seen a, seen a Division two. This is the only Division two school in the state. In the state. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Wow. So, so okay, so tell me about that. Is, what, is, what's travel like? You, you, actually, you actually wrestle the D1 guy, uh, teams. You mm -hmm. go down to the, to the Bakersfield, the Roadrunner Open and all that stuff, right? Yeah, so what's, what's cool, and this thing we, we definitely sell our guys on, that, that our recruits, that's true, is we wrestle kind of a West Coast schedule, right? So it's less about our division as more of like proximity, right? So obviously when we get to NCAs, we're in division two and we got our regional, et cetera. And we wrestle a lot of D2 dual meets in the RMAC, that's our conference. Um, but we're gonna see Stanford this year, we're gonna see Cal Poly, we're gonna go to D1 Opens, right? And we're also gonna wrestle some local NAIs at like Menlo, Southern Oregon, um, and Vanguard. So you're gonna see really a diverse group of guys. So um, it's cool because I think we get to test ourselves against everyone, yeah. you know? Yeah, I mean, it's like, talk about iron sharpening iron. It's like, that's a D1 guy. Yeah. Let's go up there and, and throw <laughs> throw down, right? Totally. That's awesome. All right, Coach, again, thanks for the time. What else you got for us here? Uh, shoot, not a whole lot. Just really appreciate you coming down. You know, I think we're building something special here, um, especially sort of like off the back of COVID. You know, we've really been putting in the work this spring. So I'm excited for the future here. And uh, yeah, right. go Gators. Yeah, go Gators. Oh, I got to ask you about that. I'm, a, I'm an idiot. From Central Ohio, are there Gators out here? <laughs> no, okay, gators, yeah. I, I saw. I'm like, what is going on here? How'd that come about? Yeah. Do you know? So um, it come, it goes back. I mean, this is like, I don't know if this is true actually, but the Golden Gate Bridge, right? And that sort of just transitioned to the Golden Gators okay. somehow. Okay. And now we're just the Gators. Of so course. That's that's kind of the, you know, the build up, but. You never know. Yeah, there. I, I was I was looking for gators in the bushes as I was walking in, but uh, yeah, I like it, man. That's cool. All right, I appreciate the time. Coach. Yep, thanks, thanks. so much.